Okay, we're going to break down a Internet Marketer sales letter, a very professionally, very well-written sales letter. It's very hyper-targeted to certain individuals. Um, these individuals are people who have had experience with Internet marketing before or have, have an interest in entrepreneurialism or startups. And they're generally also people uh, who are 55 years of age or older. And I gleamed all this from a combination from the advertisements on Facebook, which you've probably seen this advertised on Facebook Oh, a number of times, as well as, um, uh, as well as you know, deconstructing his his sales copy here, and from his sales copy alone, I can pretty much tell you what this product is. Uh, I can't tell you what the words on the pages are, but I can pretty much tell you what the product is. So, <clears throat> we'll start off on the sales page. The first thing I want to point out on the sales page is that the Ford is by Russell Brunson. Now, if you don't know who Russell Brunson is, don't feel bad. I didn't know who he was either. But he apparently made this very hyper successful uh, website called ClickFunnels. And it was basically just all about sales funnels. And he apparently made something north of $20 million from that website, which, cool. Uh, congratulations. <clears throat> I'm glad it paid off for you. Uh, now, the first thing you're going to notice here is at the top here, and it just says, get your copy of the iceberg effect. If you have any experience with sales letters at all, you know that um, a lot of the older style sales letters will ask a question first. And it'll be something like, who else wants to make a million dollars with affiliate marketing or Amazon stores or whatever? And that is generally designed to get people to feel like they're part of this group. And you go, yes, I want to make a million dollars doing that. Um, it's a level of trust building. It's a level of um, getting the getting their claws into your pockets. So this is the actual first call to action. It's at the very top of the sales letter. I think this is a little bit more common nowadays. I haven't really been paying attention to sales letters and, and how they've developed over the years, mostly because I just sort of lost interest in them. They're all the same uh, after a while, but I figured I'd deconstruct them for you guys. Uh, and for myself, it's just a sort of little mental exercise. And hopefully, you know, help you keep your money before you invest into this. Because I can tell you exactly what this is by the sales letter alone. And it's it's pretty pretty remarkable. What's really interesting here is he's got a video here. <clears throat> this video is two minutes long, and I have no idea what's in it, but I can tell you exactly what it's about. It's him telling you that this book is amazing and that he's giving it away for free. That's all it is. This book is amazing. He's giving it away for free. Uh, and then pay attention to this question down here. What is the iceberg effect? And he's going to ask this question several times in the sales letter, and he's never going to answer it. That's another psychological thing. Um, basically, uh, it's it's just another hook. <clears throat> another hook that he can use to get you to click, get your copy now, and and pay him the $8 to send you the book. Anyway, uh, I want you to also take note of something else here. And this is uh, this is something that's pretty, pretty important. Um, we have the big call to action right in your face. The first thing you see is get your copy of the iceberg effect. It's not why you should get it. It's not that it's amazing. Uh, it's not that it's going to solve any of your problems. It's just get your copy of the iceberg effect. There's another call to action right here. Get your book today. Uh, there's some other enticing stuff down there, but there's just enticing stuff everywhere. And then get your copy now and more enticing stuff. Uh, and then there's also, and you, you, if you are paying attention, there's a fourth call to action here, and it's right here. I recommend you, well, maybe I should actually use the right sizing. That'd be useful. I recommend you read this book thoroughly the right, right away. <clears throat> there are four call to actions above the fold here. They haven't told you what this is. They told you, they tell you that it's about affiliate marketing. Uh, and you know it's about affiliate marketing because it's got a forward by Russell Brunson. So they tell you what it is. It's a book about affiliate marketing. They tell you to get your copy now, read it now, get your book today, get your copy now. Four call to actions above the fold. And a video hyping by this guy. <clears throat> this clown. <laughs> Four call to actions above the fold. Never even once explained what the hell this is. Not once. You have no idea what this is. But you've been told to get it. Get it now. Get it now. Get it now. Get it now. Now, 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 now. That is an extremely important psychological play there. Very, very important. And you're going to see a lot of this as we go further and further into the sales letter. Um, <clears throat> this uh, this uh, pitch, uh, this sales pitch. 
So what is the iceberg effect? We don't know. Not a clue. Uh, so right below the fold, we have a video, and we'll find out something really interesting about the video here. Here's the video right there. <laughs> and you notice what's not here? There's nothing here. And you notice there's only words here. That's it. And there's words here. What is the iceberg effect of this video, by the way? No answer. No answer. But there's nothing here. There's no call to action here. And that's really, really interesting to me uh, for one primary reason. That means the content of this video, this 1 minute 34 second video, has nothing to do with this book and everything to do with what's below it. Okay? This video right here is about getting you to read this. It has nothing to do with the book. Nothing. Everything to do with getting you to read that. Because you are already below the fold. Okay, most users aren't going to go below the fold. Most users are going to be at the top of the fold and they're either going to click on one of the four call to actions. <clears throat> well, there's, there's one clickable link, but there's four call to actions. So they're either going to click and get the book and pay the $8 and get it, possibly get upsold several times, or they're going to leave. The maj vast majority of users who visit this website are going to click and get the book, going to leave. One or two. The other people need to be sold a little bit harder. That's why they scroll down. They watch the video, and the video doesn't... It, it sort of sells them on the book. It doesn't really sell them on the book. The video will then get them to read below the fold. The trick is, once you go below the fold, your viewership drops off dramatically. Uh, the, the ideal affiliate marketing sales copy would have nothing below the fold at all. It would just be... It would just be this. If you could ideally make affiliate co affiliate marketing copy, it would be this. It would just be this, and then you'd get you know 100% conversion rate. The rest of this, all of this, is about squeezing out as many sales as they could possibly get out of the people who scroll down and read this. Okay. So this video is nothing to do with the book. I haven't even watched it. It's a minute 34 long. Guarantee you, it's not directly about the book. It's about getting you interested in whatever this story is. So let's get into this story because this story is interesting. And I want you to pay attention to the verbiage here. We didn't have a fair chance since the day we got started. Interesting verbiage there. Very interesting verbiage there. So what is this? Who is this targeting? Who is this talking about? Immediately, if you're a former affiliate marketer, if you've ever been scammed by internet marketing, you're thinking it's about you, okay? Maybe. <clears throat> it may be about you, but this verbiage can be can hit home with basically two main categories of people. Uh, the young and poor, or the old and moneyed. And they don't realize they're moneyed, <laughs> But they've formerly been affiliate marketers before. So for the young and poor, you've got young, uh, less than, let's say, 30 years old, and bitter. They're bitter because they feel like the world hasn't been on their side, and they never got a fair chance since the day they got started. They were born. Okay? They're bitter. Um, this demographic uh, is, is very prevalent and strong in the black community. Uh, they generally tend to be male, around 20 to 30 years old. Um, the older black male, they're, they're still bitter, but they're less, they're less angry um, and more accepting. As you get older, you just sort of get more accepting about reality. Um, it's, it's kind of a strange thing. It's, it's a thing that humans do. Um, and what's really true about them is that they're generally, and I'm not talking about black people in general, but these, this group of people in general is that they're poor. They don't have extra income. A lot of these people have multiple children. They may have child. Uh, they may have um, uh, uh, child uh, welfare payments. God, I can't even. I can't even think of what it's called. But um, you know, uh, stuff like that. They don't have a lot of. It. The point is, they don't have a lot of expendable income. And I'm not trying to make any judgments here. I'm not trying to say, oh, they're they're worse off for it. I'm just trying to say this generally isn't the market this guy's going after. Okay, he doesn't want to pick the pockets of somebody who's got twenty cents to his name. He's not interested in in picking up pennies, right? 
Um, so he's not really targeting that. So that's that's one demographic he could be targeting. The other demographic, and there, there are probably smaller niche demographics or, or wider demographics, I should say. Um, you know, he could just be targeting anybody who's done affiliate marketing. Well, that's a little too wide of a net to cast, uh, unfortunately. And you can't really, um, you can't really uh, <clears throat> hone in and target that that very well. But what he's done here is like this. Think of this verbiage again. We didn't have a fair chance since the day we got started. The day we got started doesn't mean the day you were born. The day we got started was the day we started with internet marketing. We've never made it. But this is a phrase that is often used. Well, not often, but sometimes used by and accepted by older people. You know, greater than 55. Greater than 55, maybe on Social Security. Nest egg. Nest egg. They have some sort of nest egg. Doesn't have to be tens of thousands of dollars, but a couple of grand, something like that. So uh, this is probably, and this this, and we'll see later on. This is the market he's targeting. He's targeting the fifty-five plus community, uh, uh, who have who have dabbled in internet marketing or affiliate marketing before, and who want to have some sort of extra income because social security ain't cutting it for them anymore. Um, or it is cutting it, but they want to have a little bit more, maybe maybe more to spend in their life and their retirement, maybe get an RV and go travel with an RV, or maybe, you know, try to avoid having to go back to work, uh, which a lot of a lot of boomers are, are, uh, are facing nowadays. Instead of retiring like their parents did and their grandparents did, uh, uh, they, they have to continue to work. They have to, they retire, they collect their pension, they collect Social Security, and they work. There's no, there's, <laughs> there's no such thing as retirement anymore. Um, and maybe they're looking for a way to to do something simple, do something easy, do something um, that's not them standing around at a as a Walmart greeter for eight hours a day. And hey, I can't blame them. Listen, I don't want to do that either. But <clears throat> what's really key here, and what's going to be key throughout this whole thing, this whole thing, what's key is that he's targeting people who have maybe a little bit of a nest egg to spend. And those are going to be his whales. So his whole idea, his whole concept here is a funnel, right? He's got this funnel. At the top is everyone. At the top is everyone, right? And then as you, and these these people pay $8. This is, this is the $8 crowd up here. And then as he funnels down, as he funnels down, there's going to be more and more money. There's going to be the $50 crowd, the, t- the $200 crowd, and the $2,000 crowd, maybe even the $10,000 crowd all the way at the bottom, if he's lucky, okay? So he's just funneling, he's just trying to get as many people as he can who are interested in this, not just everybody, because you can just get everybody and re- get like no return on your on your investment, all right? He's trying to get as many targeted people as he can and then whittle them down and convince them that giving him their nest egg is the right move, is the smart move. And we'll see that true in a little bit. So let's continue on. We immediately start after that with trust building. This part here is all trust building. This is all trust building, trust building, trust building, trust. It's all about trust here. So how is he getting trust? He is telling you, that he understands what you think. As, as, as an older affiliate marketer, he's saying the affiliate marketing industry has, a success, has successfully hidden a devastating secret from unsuspecting victims for years. Unsus- who's, who is the unsuspecting victim here? That's you, the reader, the viewer, <clears throat> the person he's targeted with his Facebook ads. And by the way, there is a reason he's targeted Facebook. And Facebook is known to be used by an older generation. He's not targeting Instagram, which is the generation right before the boom, right uh, right after the boomers. He's not targeting um, he's not targeting YouTube, which is my generation. He's uh, not targeting TikTok or Snapchat. Although I don't know if he can advertise on Snapchat. I don't remember. Um, he's not targeting any of that. He's targeting Facebook because the older generation is not using TikTok. They're not using Snap. They're not using uh, WhatsApp. They're using Facebook. <laughs> That's where Grandma goes. <laughs> YouTube is where is where Weird Uncle Jay goes, okay? So the unsuspecting victim here is the 55-plus boomer. 
one of the 65 plus boomer at this point, if we're going to talk boomers. Um, but uh, he's now trying to build trust by saying, hey, you're the unsuspecting victim. And that little thing in the back of your mind, because you failed, you have failed, you failed. Your failure, suspicion. Your suspicion, affiliate marketing is all lies. That is what you suspect. Affiliate marketing is all lies. Okay? Uh, almost all aspiring affiliate marketers fall flat on their face and fail. Most people are completely oblivious to it. Very few people are aware of its existence, of that failure. But today it stops. I'm drawing the line in the sand. I'm the good guy. I understand your complaints, he's saying. I understand your frustrations, he's saying. And I've been successful. I've been privately training affiliate marketers for 10 years now. I don't mean he's successful at doing it. But he said he's tired of it. I'm drawing a line in the sand. This, I am going to be your friend here. I'm going to tell you that I'm tired of seeing you fail. I don't want you to spend the rest of your life in poverty. I'm your friend. I'm your friend. No one else but me. None of the other marketers are your friend. I'm your friend. Okay? Dean Holland's your friend is, is what he's saying. Don't Please don't think he's your friend. Please don't. So this is all a trust building. He's in the form of a story, mind you. The, the most effective way to sell anything is through a story. Uh, you sell that through, through cars. They, they, they tell a story in their commercials. You sell, that th you, you sell stories when you are pitching uh, investors. You sell stories. Um, you sell stories when you're <laughs> buying milk or choosing to buy what brand of cheese to buy. Everything's sold through stories. <clears throat> Everything. Watch a commercial. It's a story. That's it. Every single, every, every successful commercial is a story. <clears throat> so this is all trust building through a story. He's saying, I know what your problems are. I've seen those problems. I've seen how oblivious people are to the problem. They can't solve it. And I'm drawing the line here as a successful affiliate marketer. He's saying he's selling. I'm drawing the line here. I need to help you. I'm, I'm your savior. Ugh. I'm the leper messiah. <laughs> so here's the problem. Now this is where he introduces uh this is where he introduces his name, uh the iceberg effect. And so he's telling you that his uh he's telling you that his um the name of his book, The Iceberg Effect, is the problem that people are facing. Um it's been silently creeping up and it's going to reach a breaking point. And this is a big story about how this is just, but it's, it's all trust building. Again, you probably feel really frustrated. You maybe feel at a breaking point. He's, he's talking in terms of, uh, he's talking in terms of um, the industry at this point, right? The, the affiliate marketing industry, but really what he's talking about is you. Okay. The breaking point is not the industry. It's you. It's your breaking point, not the industry. He's telling it in the form of a story. He's not saying you're at a breaking point, but he knows, he knows, he knows because of all the targeted marketing he's been doing, you're likely at some sort of a breaking point. You're likely fed up with this nonsense. So he's selling that to you. And again, it's trust building. If he knows that, then surely he might, he must, or might have, um, have my best interest in heart. He doesn't. So what is the iceberg effect? What is the iceberg effect? I don't know. <laughs> Not here. Not here. <clears throat> it, it, there's, it, he doesn't tell you what the iceberg effect is. He says it's not a motivational strategy. It's not productivity hacks. And it's not short-term gimmicks or loopholes. Which, by the way, through those three, those three right there are the three, three most popular affiliate marketing products. <clears throat> motivational strategies, productivity hacks, and gimmicks. 
are the three most popular affiliate marketing products. And since you're already down here, you already know that those, according to you, you think are scams. So he's saying the iceberg effect is not a scam. By saying it's not these, he's saying indirectly iceberg effect is not a scam. If you come out and say this is not a scam, people think it's a scam. Straight up. They'll tell you, it doesn't matter how honest you are, they'll tell you you're scamming me. Straight up. It's, it's, it's an inborn, innate reaction in humans, or at least in the Western civilization. So what is the iceberg effect? Iceberg effect? He's telling you it's not these products. It's not, a, he's, he's indirectly trying to get you to think, oh, it's not a scam. Oh, this isn't a typical internet marketing scam. Okay? That's all he's doing. He's just trying to get you to say this is not a scam. Mentally, he's just trying to get you to say this is not a scam. So what is the iceberg effect? We don't know. We have no idea because in all of this, his book is not about, his book's not about any of that stuff. His book is not about any of that stuff. So what is it? I don't know. I don't know. He also addresses another common complaint that lack of results is not down to a lack of traffic. Um, this is something, uh, this is more very, very specific to uh, affiliate marketers have already tried in that they can't get traffic, therefore they can't get success. Um, <clears throat> what, is, what is the iceberg effect? No idea. You have to understand the five steps to combat the iceberg effect and its devastating impact. And that's what the book will show you. So what is the iceberg effect? Don't know. No idea. Hasn't told you. It's important that he hasn't told you yet, though. Very important. Because it's going to be that curiosity that he's going to sell. <clears throat> and here we have a shocking confession. This is, I don't know, it, it's just one of those popular popular things to, to put in sales pitches, that it's a shocking confession. Um, it, confession implies that he's coming clean with something. Um, it's, it's just sort of like, a, it's really just a, a clickbait headline than anything else. Uh, there's something you should know, and here's where he starts, this is where he continues to build more trust. He's taking after um, uh, televangelist televangelism here. It's another psychological trick. Uh, this was popularized way back in the 80s and 90s. Um, and I think, uh, I forgot who it was that, that was really good at this. Um, but uh, uh, one of the one of the more popular televangelists who went to prison. But, um, <clears throat> you know, he's saying some people, some people don't like me. Oh, some people don't like you. Well, that's weird. Uh, why don't people like you? In, in a normal situation, in a normal business, this is why you really need to pay attention to, to a lot of these uh, pitchmen. Uh, because in a normal situation, when you come out and say, some people don't like me, uh, a regular business will, will look at you and go, well, that's not good. <laughs> I need people to like you. You're a salesman. You're a pitchman. I need people to like you. I need as many people to like you as possible because I need you to make sales. And if people don't like you, you can't make sales. He's not selling to businesses to sell to other people. He's selling to you. Okay. And what he's saying is that I'm the truth teller. I come along and tell them it's all BS and they've been lied to. And that's why some people don't like me. I'm the truth teller. And you already think this is BS anyway. He's already led you. Remember up here. Remember up here, he's already led you <clears throat> into remembering that this is all BS, okay? That this is all BS because they fall flat on their face. And you already thought up here already, up here, all the way up here, you've already thought affiliate marketing is BS. All the way up here. He's, he's now got you in this mindset anyway. So now you're down here and he's telling you, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Not everyone likes me. Not people don't like me because I tell them it's BS. And you've already thought it's BS. You now agree with this man. Okay? You are in agreement with this man. You're friends. You're, you're almost best buddies at this point. <clears throat> and then he pulls something really interesting. And I haven't seen this pulled for a while. Uh, I mean, I've seen it. <clears throat> I've seen people try it, but he does it really well here. He says, my book can't fix a closed mind 
My book can't fix a closed mind, nor will I try. This was a really, really, really popular way to, to promote Jesus back in the 80s and 90s via televangelism. And one of the popular phrases, I'm, I'm misquoting it here exactly, but it was, a closed mind isn't ready to accept Jesus Christ. He's not saying you're closed-minded. Okay? That's, that's a very important distinction. He's leaving that up to you to determine if you're closed-minded. If you determine you're closed-minded, as our society is, is very willing to, um, to tell people is a bad thing, if you're closed-minded, you need to change that. You need to change your attitude. You need to change your habit. Because you're closed-minded. And his book can't fix a closed mind, so you need to change that habit. You need to not be closed-minded about this book. You need to not be closed-minded about Jesus, and that's how you can accept it into your life. Well, that's how you can accept this book and what it's trying to teach you and its teachings. He's treating his product almost like a, a religious experience here. Um, and that's very, exp uh, that's very, very, um, it's, it's very effective. <clears throat> so... He then goes on to say, and we're going to keep this in mind. So we went from televangelism here to uh, skills. Whoops, let me get the right tool here. Uh, to skills. And notice I said skills and work in the same breath. He went, he went on to say, this is going to take hard work. Hard work is what he's saying. And this is important for people who have already been affiliate marketers because they understand a lot of the products that are sold. They're saying, hey, this is easy. Click here, get this done. No big deal. They'll say it's easy, uh, and they've been burned before. And now he's saying this is the exact opposite. This is the exact opposite. My product, my product, mine, my prod, greater than scams. All right, my product will lead you to the promised land. Okay, my product will lead you to the promised land. My product will make it work, but you have to work hard too. Just like you got to work hard for Jesus. Just like you got to work hard for Jesus. So what's inside the book? This is an interesting uh, little piece of the sales copy here. Um, and it's, this is less something people expect you to read uh, from what I can tell. And more about listing things that might catch your eye at some point. Because if you look at this, this is a lot. <laughs> this is a lot of stuff. Okay, and so things like this are are not meant to be read word for word. They're not made to be read word for word. They're they're made to accomplish a couple of things. One, um, not primarily, but one, uh, it's made to catch your eye. If you if you see a title uh, that that interests you, for example, um, I see over here, I see the only three types of traffic. I didn't mean to cross that out. The only three types of traffic. That's something that crosses my How to control traffic. Something that catches my The rest of it, I don't care. Um, so, you know, uh, th those are something that catches my Oh, that's interesting. Oh, something that's interesting, interesting to me uh, is in this book. Okay. Okay. This free book. Uh, the Big Traffic Lie. Um, that's the first 99 pages. We'll, we'll get into why this is here. Um, other, you know, things that catch my eye. Uh, the cheese incident, the ultimate funnel, um, uh, those, this one word is everything. These are all things that catch my eye and make me go, oh, well, that's valuable to me, <clears throat> I think. Uh, it's, it's not even a, a deep thought either. It's just, oh, that's valuable to me. Okay. What this actually is, okay, what this actually is, is outlining, outlining a value. And we're doing this by having a lot of shit that's all this is all of this is shit but there's a lot of it and so you start to mistake the shit for value you think shit equals value all right you think that but it's wrong it's very very wrong however it's what you think and so you immediately think, oh, look at all of this. And we have, let's just count. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21 stories in the first 99 pages. He's highlighted that out again, the first 99 pages. Okay? 
the first 99 pages. Holy crap, I'll make this tool work. The first 99 pages. And there's more. All right, there's, that's the keyword there. There's more. All right, false value. False value. Or false value is... As I uh, as I wrote, or v or v yeah, value. Okay, <clears throat> false value. As I wrote it, this is a false sense of value. Okay, ninety nine pages, twenty one stories. By the way, none of these. I guarantee you, none of these are going to be step by step instructions. I can almost guarantee you, none of this is going to be exact step by step instructions on how to do anything. They're going to be stories told. They they're, they're going to be uh, told from uh from this guy's point of view. Stories on on what's important to take away from this. They're, they're going to be fables, <laughs> is what they're going to be. Um, but he's given you false hope that these these are useful little nuggets. Okay, and then we've got another list of them. Okay, and here he even says it straight up, straight up. He even says there is so much value, quick and easy. Quick and easy value. All you have to do is get my book or his book, and you get quick and easy value. And if you're if you're smart, if you're smart, you're thinking back and thinking, that's a strange bit of terminology there. Quick and easy, isn't it? That's really strange, right? Quick and easy. But didn't you just say? Didn't you just say? All the way up here. That you need skills and work? That you need skills and work? How is that quick and easy? Huh? There's a little disconnect there, isn't there? It's a little bit of a disconnect. You see, he's playing on two things you have going on in your head right now. He's playing on the he's playing on the concept that affiliate marketing and internet marketing in general are, are scams. And so he's outlining over here why it's not a scam. Not scam? No, it's a scam. He's trying to outline why it's not a scam here. And then by having this big old list here, he's trying to, he's not really trying to, but he gets the benefit of having you basically forget that he just said, oh, it's not easy work. And then telling you and playing on your greed and this is this is a greed play here. This is a big greed play here that it's quick and easy. Quick and easy value. Quick and easy. It's quick and easy. What is greed? Quick and easy. That's what greed is. It's not about having a lot of money. Being greedy isn't about having a lot of money. Being greedy is about trying to find the quick and easy way to a goal. That's what greed is. And I bet you I'll bet you you were never taught that lesson. A lot of people were never taught that lesson. Greed is not about how much money you have in the bank account. Greed is about greed is about trying to get the quick and easy goal. That's what greed is about. So <clears throat> he's playing to your greed. Uh, let's discuss the elephant in the room with a cute little picture of an elephant. That's just stylistic choice. Why am I giving you this book? Stop and think for a second. He's not actually giving you the book. You have to pay for it. Okay, you're not getting the book for free. Don't think you're getting the book for free. <sighs> So why is he giving you this book? He's been in that situation before. I've been broke, financially poor, mentally defeated. I know what it's like to be putting in the, the time and money and getting nowhere fast. It sucks. But do you know what's worse? When you don't even know why. When you don't even know why. I'm exactly like you. I'm still building trust. We're halfway down the sales page. I'm still building your trust. Look at that. I've been in your shoes before. I've been in your shoes before. That's all he's saying. I've been in you. He may not even be honest here. He could be completely lying about this. He's telling a story. I've been in your shoes before. I'm like you. I'm like you. I'm just like friend 
That's what he's saying. I'm just like you, friend. Smiley face. <clears throat> now, why did he write this book? Because I had to write the book. Enough is enough, and it's time for a change. I cannot do an Owen Hart impression, by the way. Um, I'm running a business, and I'd love nothing more than to form a long-term relationship with my customers. This is part trust-building and part truth-telling. Part trust-building, part truth-telling. Okay? <clears throat> with my belief, by helping you with this book, you are more likely to want to do business together with me and my company in the future. There you go. He's straight up telling you, I'm going to upsell you. I'm going to upsell you. He worded it in a way that makes you feel like you'll be an entrepreneur starting a business making money with him. And spend, by spending money in his business, you'll be making money in your business. But the truth is, I'm going to upsell you. That's all he's doing. He's telling you, I'm going to upsell you. Now, before we go any further, keep in mind, remember earlier we said this is the 55 plus crowd? The white 55 plus crowd? The boomers? <clears throat> Take a look at these pictures. Take a look at all these people. Take a look at this guy and this girl. Take a look at them. Older, 55 plus, 65 plus, 70 plus possibly. I can't tell. Hell, this looks like my grandpa before he died. Hi, grandpa. How you doing? I don't know who that is or who that is. <laughs> 55 plus. So what did I say before? He's targeting the 55 plus crowd. He's targeting Social Security. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. These aren't no spring chickens, folks. He's targeting a specific demographic with a specific amount of income who have possibly had some sort of some sort of nest egg or maybe they're already successful in life and they want to be more successful or they want to retire or they want to stay retired and they're willing to put money into it. This is who they're targeting. This is who he's targeting. You don't put random pictures up here. These are not random. These are not random pictures. These are pictures that are designed to look like you. 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 Designed to look like you. Why? Because it's more familiar. Simply that. It's more familiar. It's comforting to see people who look like you. It's not a racial thing. It's not racism. It's not classism. It's not sexism. It's literally to make you feel more comfortable and that you're joining a community of people just like you. That's what it's designed. It's all about that one word. Trust. And he's saying, trust me. I can help your people out. That's it. That's all that is. This is all trust building. See any black women there? See any young black guys? Any young Hispanic guys? Latinos? Japanese? Chinese? Taiwanese? No. Eskimos? See any Eskimos there? No. 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 You see boomers. You see the boomer generation. The boomer generation who probably the last generation to get a legitimate retirement, legitimate pensions. The last generation to probably have a legitimate nest egg by the time they're 65. A nest egg that this guy can plunder. And guess what? This is just the televangelism business model all over again. It's all it is. It's the televangelism sales funnel all over again. In case you don't know how the televangelism sales funnel works, I'm going to draw it out for you. Okay. You have the congregation at the top. Well, that's way too thick. Congregation at the top. And then you get the congregation. They give small money to the guy. And then from there, we go down even further and we get a little bit bigger money to the guy. Supposedly to God. And then from there, we get the big money. That's the big money, the whales. The whales at the bottom. Okay? These are the whales at the bottom. Thousands of dollars. Thousands. Of 
per person. And they come back to the whales time and time and time again. Televangelism was all about getting the initial donation, then getting the follow-up calls, then getting the follow-up calls, follow-ups, upsell, and then upsell, and then sell again. That's it. That's televangelism. If you've never been part of televangelism, you've never seen it happen, good for you. But what happens is that you get part of the congregation, that's just the mass congregation of people who are all interested in Jesus, and they say, hey, we need your help. If maybe you could give us a little bit of money to help us out. $10, $5, $100 if you can. And then once you do that and you're in their system, they upsell you. They go, hey, you want a little bit of more Jesus? Give us a little more money. We'll get you more Jesus. And then they upsell you more. You want even more Jesus in your life? You want to really feel the presence of God? You got to give us more money, whale. <clears throat> it is the same exact business model being used against the same age demographic as televangelists targeted back in the day. The same people. I mean, different generation, but the same type of people. And it's the same thing here. He's got his congregation at the top and the sales funnel the the 796 or whatever it is right and then from here he's going to ask for $50 for $100 for $200 for $2000 for $5000 for $10000 Per year, just like televangelists did. The per year part is in the thousands. Those are for the whales. That's his entire business model. I guarantee you. The 796, that just gets you into the system. That gets you into the system, okay? And from here, upsells, upsell to next, upsell. And then here, you've joined the choir. Choir of angels. Where you get direct access to God via the televangelist. Or in this case, money. Which is your God at this point. That's his whole business model. His whole business model right there. Also, it's an interesting twist on how he delivers it. Um, but we'll uh, we'll get we'll get there anyway. Uh, this is the bonus section. This is uh, this is just more value building, just just value building. There's there's nothing special here. Value building. Uh, there's there's nothing special. It's just value building. You get this audio book. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and he he does more trust building with it too as well. He you've got this, um, you've got this over here saying everyone I spoke to told me to sell it as an additional product, but you know what? I had to get I had guarantee you I had the contents of this book are so critical to your online business as an affiliate I, that I knew I had guarantee you got it. I'm sorry that kind of that 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 poor sales copy just just caught me off guard. I, it's it's almost as if a non-native speaker wrote this. Um, the contents of this book are so critical to your online business as an affiliate that I knew I had to guarantee you got it. There's there's a two missing in there, uh, Dino. <laughs> so you get the audio MP3 version free too, because I'm a good guy. I'm a good guy. Look at that. Look at me. Look at me. I'm a good guy. I'm I'm a good guy. I'm the good guy. Good guy, Dean. Good guy, Dean. Oh, look at that. He's even got a happy face. Good guy, Dean. You get the... People told me to sell it anyway, but no. No, no, no. I'm the good guy, Dean. Trust building. Trust building. That's all it is. So the value adds is... Um, then you get more on the special bonus. Uh, I created a brand new online masterclass. Uh, every little detail is dissected and laid out. Again, just value build, value build here. Um, and then just more value build. And this is also... Um, and this is also uh, 
This is also good guy Dean here. How awesome would it be if every day for the next seven days I sent you something epic right to your email inbox? See that? That's more of, that's more of the uh, good guy Dean, the GGD right there. That's the GGD right there. So just value building, value building, value building. All right. Um, and then uh, that's, that's it for the value build segment here. This is value build. Say, hey, you're getting all this for a free ebook. It's just $7.96 in shipping. Here's a little secret about all these, by the way. Okay. I've already got this bonus, the Iceberg Effect audiobook. It's two and a half hours of this guy droning on just reading his book. He, he literally just sat down and, and read his book in his microphone for two and a half hours, and that was it. I, anyone can do that. There's no value in that. Uh, bonus two, the master class. Uh, I've seen these quote-unquote classes before. There's really nothing to them. It's, um, it's really just shallow, empty, very hastily put together. Tops five hours put into it. And then bonus number three, the seven days of mystery surprises. Are, I've gotten already one of them, and that's ju- it was just an upsell to, to his uh, to his investment course, his two thousand dollar investment course. <clears throat> and now his is a better than free guarantee. Um, his better than free guarantee, where you take the full thirty days to enjoy it, and you don't feel it's worth seven ninety six shipping and handling. Just let me know, uh, and your order receipt, and I'll return out of my own pot, out of my own pocket. No, you pocketed the money, my friend. I'll give you eight dollars if you don't like it. Shut up. That's the good guy, Dean, again. Out of my own pocket. Out of my own pocket. Uh, there's the GGD. Good guy, Dean. Right there, out of my own pocket. Mm. Now, here's something I've never understood about affiliate marketers is how they came up with the value here, the the dollar percentage, the, the dollar value. I don't I don't understand. I don't understand where this comes from. Um, I don't understand how it's valued. I don't understand uh, how this book is worth nineteen ninety five. I don't understand how the audio book is worth ten dollars more. I don't understand how the master class is worth ninety seven dollars. Why would you sell me this book? Sell this, but give away this. How? How? Why? To see, this is the logical thing that I can't think of. This is where I always, I always sort of trip over my own brain and go, but how? But why? I don't, what? Huh? No. You're supposed to believe that this is good guy Dean, okay? You're supposed to believe in the GGD, right? You're supposed to believe in GGD, but, I mean, he, it's not a good guy Dean. This is, this is literally the thing you should be selling if it's worth $100, not giving it away with an $8 book that you probably printed on Lulu for $2.95 and then shipped out via USPS or whatever you ship it out for you. And we finally, after all of that, by the way, all of this, this whole thing, look at all this, look at all this, look at all this, look at all of this, look at all of this, there's not one call to action at all. This is all trust building and value proposition. All of it is trust building and value proposition. No, there is not one call to action here. Not one. There's not a single call to action of get my book. There's descriptions of why the book is awesome. There are, descript- there are stories about why I'm doing, why he's doing this. There's not a single call to action until we finally wrap up the huge value proposition with his guarantee and how much it's tech, how much he claims it's worth. I, I, I would love to see them prove in a court how this is worth anything at all. <laughs> I'd love to see that. And here we are finally at the end of it. The only call to action after the fold. The only call to action after the fold. Right there. And it's got a little animation to it. It's That's cute and whatever. It doesn't really mean anything. The only call to action after the fold. Right there. Well, I mean, I mean the, the first call to action after the fold, I should say. Not the only one. Right there. After all of that value proposition build up. If you're still not hyped, after all of the, but wait, there's more. Like, look at this. But wait, there's more. Here's the story. Here's us telling you how the pro- what the problem is. 
Okay, and here's the product. All right, and here's the but wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. But wait, and oh, I'm sorry. And yes, there's more. <laughs> Not a but wait, it's an and yes. But wait, there's more. 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 Value, value, value. Here's the customer 100% guaranteed satisfaction. Here's the call to action. Thank you for reading this letter. Blah, blah, blah. Um, <clears throat> I can't wait to hear your feedback when you read the book. Uh, remember to send me a photo of you with it. Don't do that. Because uh, if you read the terms of service, uh, he owns all the copyrights and can use your image in, perp in perpetuity. Without any royalties, and you can't do anything about it. Don't do this. Do not. Do not do this. Don't send him a photo. He will use it. No royalties, and you can't do shit about it. And he then recaps. Um, he then recaps the value proposition down here. In case you skipped the first call to action, he recaps the value proposition, um, and then gives you another call to action. And then there's, uh, for some reason, another. Um, there's, a, there's a Facebook post under this. I just think he was. I, I think part of this is to say, you know, you're joining a community of people just like you. I think this is I think this is one of those you're joining a community of people just like you because they use uh, he uses the the clappy emojis you see you see there the, the the clappy emoji right there and he uses the the shocked face emoji and then he speaks um not like a kid but he definitely types like an older adult um and then underneath that you can tell that this is an older person uh because of the uh, you well, you can tell they're trying to market to an older person uh, because of the watch. Wow, that's huge. That'd be way too big. Uh, because of the watch, uh, that's the style of watch that a boomer would wear. I mean, and then you can also look at the hand. It's a it's an older um, it's an older hand. Uh, it's definitely uh, a little bit more worn than the uh, than a younger kid's hand. Can't really tell by here, but you can definitely tell by the um, the outer index finger and the uh, lower part of the palm there as well as the uh, as well as the wrinkling in the wrist there that's an older person so it's uh, it's trying to deliver a little bit more comfort to the older generation that are that are likely reading this and then a f final uh, call to action here and that's the end of the sales letter so what have we discovered about this we have discovered that this entire iceberg effect is a sales funnel and the whole idea behind this is to get whales if so we get as many people who were minorly interested in affiliate marketing who are of age 55 plus, 65 plus, who have some sort of a nest egg that they can that they can raid and, or for a little bit and then dive into this man's business proposition. Now, what is the business proposition? Well, it's affiliate marketing. That's that's really all it is. He's asking you to pay him money, to pay him uh, 1997 one thousand nine hundred ninety seven dollars to become his affiliate marketer and he's doing it the Don LaPree way the Don LaPree business in a box if you guys have ever seen the internet business in a box it was a Don LaPree infomercial it's this business in a box that's what this is and he's asking you to pay two thousand dollars to sign up for it to start your business to invest quote unquote in your business don lapree was uh was brought up on uh, on federal charges over that by the way for fraud and and defrauding people similarly aged people so there you go that's the iceberg effect it doesn't even matter what the book says doesn't even matter what the book says okay nothing in that book matters nothing he says matters nothing this guy says matters nothing the sales letter says every actually everything the sales letter says matters it tells you exactly what's going on it tells you everything that's happening okay he's telling you and he's told you i'm going to sell and sell and sell and you're gonna you're gonna raid your nest egg your retirement nest egg and you're gonna give me a little bit of that money that's what he's selling. He's a televangelist trying to sell you salvation in the form of more money. The thing you were to, the thing you were brought up with to to understand that is the only thing that matters.
And to be fair, in our society, money kind of is the only thing that matters. Money is God in our society, no matter how much you don't want it to be true. He's done it very effectively in this sales letter, extremely effectively in this sales letter. Now, he goes on after you purchase the book. I've already purchased it. We'll do a review of it sometime. I don't really care. Uh, but then he goes on to sell you on other stuff in this in his sales funnel. Um, as soon as you purchase the book, you're given a video that's about an hour long to, or I don't know. I remember like maybe half hour long. Uh, that is essentially a sales pitch for his uh, for his investment system, um, which is, again, the $2,000 system. And then he uh, sends you over to another <clears throat> sales funnel, which uh, which tries to sell you on a $47 book. And then he tries to sell you on a $97 one. And then he tries to sell you on something that's like a hundred. That's like $200, but you can split it up into $99 payments. And then he tries to sell you on the $2,000 uh, investment course, and then he tries to sell you on that again, and you get another email that tries to sell you on the two thousand dollar investment idea. And by selling it on, he tries to he tries to frame it as an application to a startup accelerator type of system. Um, and it's one and it's minimum investment of one thousand nine hundred ninety seven dollars, but he also suggests there's a five thousand dollar level <laughs> that you can sign up for. So it all starts with this sales page, and this sales page tells you everything you need to know. I'm setting up a funnel. I'm going to sell you at every step of the funnel. I'm going to get you down to the bottom of the funnel and extract as much money as I possibly can out of you. Maybe I only get $8. Because guess what? It doesn't cost $8 to print these books. And it doesn't cost $8 to ship them either. Okay? It's not going to cost them $8 to ship this stupid little 120-page book. So it doesn't cost them $8. It doesn't cost them $8 to print it. He's making a little bit of money off of you. Maybe not much. Maybe a dollar, maybe two dollars, if he's really, really, really great on his margins. Maybe fifty cents, but it's still profit along the way. He's this is not a loss leader as he's as he's essentially making it out to be. Hundred percent guarantee you, it's not a loss leader. He's not losing money on Diet Coke. <laughs> okay, he's he's making pennies. He's picking up pennies on a railroad here, but he's making pennies off of this. And then his upsell. There's one upsell. It's seventeen dollars, and you, for seventeen dollars, you think, oh well, I may as well do that. It's only about $25, both of them combined. There's a $17 upsell. I'll click that. Fine, it's only $25. Who cares? Then there's another upsell. It's a $47 upsell. Oh, it's, if you get this upsell, it's even better. This whole thing starts to make even more sense with the $47 upsell. And then there's the $97 upsell. It makes even more sense. And then there's the $200 upsell. And then there's the $200 upsell, but it's $99 a month. And then there's the two thousand. You know, and and it just all makes sense. If you just buy it, it'll all make sense, and it'll help you figure things out. So, what is the iceberg effect? It's this. This is the iceberg effect. The iceberg is bigger at the bottom than it is on top. Well, here you go. Here's your iceberg. It just whittles down to the bottom of the iceberg until you get your whales down there. That's where the whales sit. I haven't even read his book. I haven't even read the damn book. I haven't listened to the audio. I can almost, almost guarantee you he talks about whales. Because that's exactly how this works. It's all about getting to the whales. It's all about whaling. And you're a whaler. And that's what it's about. And being a televangelist and promising people that I'm here to help you and that I'll be here to help you. And that's his sale page. And that is the Iceberg Effect sales page deconstructed and possibly the entire business model deconstructed start to finish. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.